Morning, everybody. This is Justin with Subboard Guide, and today we are going to be reviewing one of our favorite boards, the Thurso Surf Water Walker Series. And like last year, we're going to be reviewing all three boards together so you can decide first if this is the board that's right for you, and then if it is, which board amongst the three that they have is the best fit for you. So let's dive in. <music> go over everything that comes included when you buy a Thurso Surf Water Walker and then also we're going to cover some of the optional accessories that you can get. Um, so on this side here is everything that comes included with the kit. So as you can see it really does come with everything you need to get out on the lake other than a life jacket. Um, so starting off the bag, we really do like the the bag on the Thurso Surf. You'll notice each bag kind of has this nice little um, almost like plastic stamp that tells you which model you have, which we just think looks kind of cool for our purposes. It makes it really easy to keep things organized. Um, but the bag in general, really good quality bag. R the fabric's very thick. The zippers feel really nice. When you have it on your bag, on, on your back, it's, it's very comfortable and easy to carry around. So if you do need to go hiking, um, you know, a mile or two or something like that, like you definitely can do that. Um, Features that the bag has, on the front you do have this nice zippered pouch area where I like to keep the fins and the leash right here. You also have this front see-through area that you could probably put some smaller fins or something if you'd like. There aren't necessarily any side pockets, which if you do like those, that's something that I think Thurso could add um, to this bag. But in general, just a good quality bag. The inside compartment um, you'll notice if you really start comparing against the brands, Thurso's bag's a little thinner than some of the other ones. And so that's nice when you have the board in the bag and you're carrying it around. And it's also nice for their smaller 120. But as you do get up to that 132, the larger board, it does get just a little tight. So just be aware of that. Um, and it's, you're going to want to if you really want to pack it in nice and neat, you're going to want to suck all the air out. And that's really probably our only kind of semi complaint about the bag is it can be a little bit smaller for the bigger board. But again, it does fit it completely fine, fits everything really well. It's just a little tighter than I think it needs to be um, on that with the bag. So moving on, included in the, the kit is this nice upgraded pump. And there's a lot of things that we really like with what Thurso did with this pump. You can see these handles, they can, you can screw them off and you can fold up the side. So it just makes it a little more compact in that bag, which is nice. And it's a really high quality, so dual chamber, triple action pump. And what that means, and I'm not necessarily gonna attach this now, um, is when you're pumping air in, and there's different settings on the back here, right? And it has instructions on how to do this. But basically, when it's on the, the first setting, you're using both chambers, both on the upstroke and the downstroke. So you're pushing air into the board when you're pulling up and when you're pushing down. So that's what you're gonna start, start pumping up the, bag, the board with, is on that first setting. Then when it gets harder, you switch it to setting two, and that turns it into a dual chamber single action. So on the upstroke, you're not pushing air in, only on the downstroke. And then when it starts to get really hard, that's where you, you go to setting three and it becomes a single chamber, single action. So nothing on the upstroke, only on the downstroke, only out of one chamber. And that, that helps you really get those last couple of PSI in. Um, and so this pump, like I said, it, it's one of the better pumps in this price range in the kit. It does a really good job. We still recommend an electric pump unless you really do want an arm workout. You know, it, it's, I, ironically, you can actually pump it up a little faster with this than an electric pump. It's just obviously a lot less workout. Um, another trick, if you don't have the electric pump, if you have another person, you can both kind of step on the side here and, and kind of grab like this and pump it up and go really fast and keep it on those higher settings. So a good pump. We really like how Thurso upgraded that and we think you're gonna really like that pump in the kit. Next thing that I wanna point out, Thurso did upgrade their paddle. Um, I've always liked the shape and the feel of the paddle. 
you know, the, the grip is a little bit different than some of the other paddles, but it does just have a really nice firm feel to it. Sometimes this top part here, and I'll, I'll pull it out. Sometimes this very top part here is just connected with like a single screw. There's no tape, there's no glue. And when you're really cranking on the paddle, it can feel like it's gonna, it, that's gonna be your weakest point. Not the case with the Thurso Water Walker. It's a carbon fiber composite shaft with a nylon blade and nylon handle, and it only weighs 28 ounces, so they cut off some weight. And it, I mean, I know we're talking ounces here, but when you are starting to cut off a couple of those ounces, you really notice it, especially on those longer, you know, more touring type adventures. And so big thumbs up to Thurso with what they've done. It's a nice secure paddle. You'll notice they have the up top when you're assembling it, you have a clamp here that slides in and you clamp it down tight. One thing to notice, you'll have this little screw that sometimes you will have to tighten it a little bit and you can without tools. So it's toolless tightening, which we like. Um, so if you're out on the water and it does become loose, you can just kind of tighten it right up. It doesn't have a little notch here or on the inside to kind of guide it and keep it in place. But for a kit paddle, I, I think that's fine. Um, for a kit paddle of this quality, it, it's totally fine. But that'd be one thing just to notice. The bottom, you'll see it's a pin lock and the clamp. Again, a toolless tightening clamp there and it keeps that, that bottom section just really nice and tight. So you really don't have much movement when you're paddling and you can really crank on this paddle and it's gonna hold up even if you're really going hard even, and even if you're a, a big, heavy, strong paddler. Um, so that's the paddle that it comes with. They also do have a full carbon fiber paddle upgrade that you can look at that I do really like. Um, and if, if you're a more serious, kind of intermediate, advanced paddler, something to consider. One nice thing that Thurso also did this year and last is they've, they've actually expanded their color options on the board. So now, last year you just had one color option, 132, 126, and 120. Now you can get each color option in each board and the leash matches that color. So if you get the red board, you get this nice red leash. It's a, it's a full swivel, you know, um, just a good high quality leash branded really nicely, very comfortable on your ankle and does a really nice job. Again, I like how it matches the board. Then finally in the kit, you also get their, their snap lock fins. So these fins, you know, we kind of used to recommend that boards go with the US or um, universal fin box. You can go to surf shop, grab, buy whatever longboard fin that you want. The more people we talk to, they actually prefer these just because you just snap them in and you go. Their performance is still really good. And now that more companies are using them, you can also find, you know, river fins and other options, even on Amazon or, you know, from brands themselves. So good fin set. I like the triple fins, the tri-fin setup. Makes for a good, you know, high performance board. So that's everything that comes included in the kit. It's a really good quality kit. You're going to notice as I talk about Thurso, everything they do, you can tell they, they want to make it as high quality as possible. So even though this is not as expensive as some of the boards that you see at REI, um, the quality is there. And I really like that about them. Now, moving on, there's a couple accessories that you can buy. Again, these accessories are not included in the kit. You do have to purchase them on top of it. Um, but it does just make the board a little more of an all around board and gives you a couple, you know, cool things that you can do. So first you do have the carry strap. And so this just enables you to, you know, kind of use your shoulder as you carry the boards. Thurso boards, they did cut some weight this year. And so I don't know if it's as needed, but it is nice, especially if you're carrying a lot of stuff to have that strap. They have kind of these, these carabiners that really kind of go with their, with their cooler. And so when you, you can strap this to the back of the board or to the front of the board. Um, and it, it's a really nice cooler. It's actually pretty thick. The, it's a little bit, I mean, tight to open and close, but higher quality coolers, that, that's kind of what you want is a really nice quality zipper that's gonna last and provide good insulation. So when you're out on the lake, it, I mean, your drinks aren't gonna get you know warm. Nice zipper, or sorry, Velcro pouches up top so you can store little things, maybe like a phone um, or keys or, or whatever you want. Just make sure it's again attached down to the board so you don't lose that stuff. But do like that, that cooler fits, has a lot of good um, capacity there. They, for those of you who want 
a kayak, but also on a paddleboard. They have their kayak seat and it's shaped a little bit differently than some of the competition. You actually get a little bit of a raised seat here, which I like. It's still probably not tall enough for me because I'm, I'm one of the most inflexible people you'll ever meet. Um, so I would probably put like some towels or something up there to raise me a little higher or look online to get a little seat pad to put up. But for most people, the, that, the fact that it's raised makes it a little nicer than some of the other, you know, kit kayak seats. And then this year as well, um, and we're always recommending this, Thurso did upgrade their pump. So this is their electric pump. It's an upgraded option from last year and just really has a lot of nice settings and is a much better pump. In fact, just this morning we pumped up, I think three boards with it without a problem. You probably don't wanna do more than two or three boards without giving it a break and just make sure these don't overheat. That's pretty standard on all electric pumps, but I can't say enough, it's worth the investment. I think it's around $150 um, for it. And these are just a little more complicated than what you see you know, at Walmart or Home Depot generally. So good quality pump, um, definitely recommend that purchase. And so all those items, again, are just some of the things you can add on to your cart. They do not come included, but just make this up a little more of an all around, um, more fun experience when you're out on the lake. So now let's dive into the features that you get on the Thirsto Surf Water Walker series. And it is loaded with features. So up at the nose there, first you have a GoPro mount. Um, and I really like that. It gives a really good shot up on that nose. The only thing that I would say about that is I wouldn't mind if they added some action mounts back here, um, just because that's a little bit hard to get to while you're paddling, unless you've got some pretty good skills and you can hang 10 on, on the front of the board there. Um, you have a really nice grab handle at the front, also in the middle and the back. The, those handles just really make it nice to both carry the board. You know, if you pump it up into your car and bring it out to the, to the lake or the beach or whatever, you can have two people carrying it. Also helps launching the board and getting the board out of the water. The, the quality of those is really nice. Um, they're padded, feel really good. They do take a second to dry off, just note, um, but that's kind of the, the takeaway given that they're padded and they have a good quality there. You have a front area that, it's a very large cargo area, so you can put a lot of stuff under here. And you'll notice they're good quality bungees. Um, you can untie it if you want to get it off. Um, but six D-rings out front. You'll also notice they're very large D-rings, which we really like. It just makes it a little more universal if you want to do your own bungee system or clip into a bunch of other things. It gives you a lot of space there. The one thing I would say on this front area is I wouldn't mind if these, if these bungees um, and D-rings were moved more to the side of the board. I like to move around a lot on the board, especially if I'm surfing. Sometimes you want to step up here. Um, and so I think if they moved it out just a little bit, and maybe even extended the deck pad, just give you a little more play on the board. Um, but in general, really nice setup. So moving down the board, you see this really nice EVA foam deck pad, and it's, it's actually one of my, I, I really like this deck pad. Um, if you get up here close, you can see the little stamp, the Thurso Surf logo stamped in, and that stamp just gives it enough traction that you're not, you're not slipping on the board, you're not moving around. Um, there's not like, grooves cut into the board but i find the water still does run off it really well so again it's it's a very comfortable um deck pad but it still does have nice grip i also really like how they've put that rubber kind of stamp of of the name of the board in the deck pad it just looks really nice to me i think in general just i really do love the look of the water walker um you also have the four d rings there that's for the kayak seat conversion kit or whatever else you want to you know tie into that and then as you move back to the board. You'll notice, again, a rear handle here. So again, those three handles. Um, a smaller, just four D-ring bungee area. So that's a total 14 D-rings. Um, and I, I don't mind how they made this smaller. It gives you a little more space on the board. Some people, if you do like a larger rear, you know, bungee area, you might wish it was a little bit larger. For me, I usually put most of the stuff up front. That way, if I'm paddling and it falls in, I see it. Um, and a good, nice, nice, good, high quality bungees than the last, last D-ring there. So as you can see, there's, there's a lot of nice features on the board and it, how they've tied it all in just really ties into that nice, clean, kind of classic look. And we really do like that. All right. So now we're going to dive into the construction quality, what these are made out of, um, and also dive into some of the differences, because this is where they start to kind of diverge, right? So all the boards 
are made with the same dual layer, you know, high quality PVC construction that's wrapped around that inner drop stitch core. And you'll notice if you compare kind of last year's boards to this year's, they've dropped some weight, which is really nice because that was their that was probably about our only complaint on the th on the thirst of last year is it felt fantastic in the water but getting it to and from they just felt about two pounds too heavy um, compared to some other boards and so what Thurso did they went to that dual layer construction with the the inner drop stitch instead of being linear they went to a woven drop stitch and so what that does is it actually allows them to to use a little bit less material inside but it's stronger so it's more expensive to do but it is higher quality and I know there's some debate about that in the industry but kind of the performance matches up what they've told us there um, and so from a weight standpoint they did go down so the 10 foot board the 120 is about 22 and a half pounds and then the 126 you move up to about 24 pounds and on the 11 foot 132 you go to 26 pounds so again it's a couple pounds off it's not too light, it's not too heavy, it's kind of right in that spot that is kind of my preference. You'll notice a lot of the higher end boards are a little bit heavier just because you have more materials there. Um, they all still do have that carbon fiber rail, so they've really reinforced the rails to make sure, because I mean that's where you're most likely going to hit some things. Um, and it's also something that gives it a little bit more rigidity. We've done a bit of testing on carbon fiber rails versus non-carbon fiber rails. And what we found so far is that it does seem to enhance the rigidity of the board. When we bend tested these boards where we take, a, t take basically two different stands seven feet apart and we put 150 pounds right in the center of the board, these are some of the most rigid boards that we've tested. So that speaks to the construction quality of the Thurso Waterwalker series. Um, and you can just tell that throughout, like I've mentioned. So now let's look at some of the differences here, right? And really, Thurso's taking a, I wouldn't necessarily call it super unique, but there is a slight different approach to what they've done in the sizes. You'll notice as you move from the larger 132 down to the 120, you get shorter in length, but you also get short, uh, get, you know, less width. So the 132 it's 11 feet long this is generally the size that we recommend for most for most paddlers even shorter paddlers like a lot of the companies will recommend oh you're shorter go with this one you're taller go with that one we found that generally speaking as long as you're okay with kind of the size of the board you do get enhanced stability a um, little better performance generally on the longer boards because you have longer water line and so we do like the 11 foot in general but I like how Thurso's stepped down the boards. So 11 feet, then you go to 10.6, and then you go to 10 feet. Width, you go from 32 inches wide to 31 inches wide to 30 inches wide. So a lot of other brands will take kind of the approach of just changing the length and not the width. And so you end up with a shorter board that's really stable, um, but you lose a little bit of the speed, right? And so, yes, uh, you know, and we'll talk about it later, this is a little bit slower, but because it's, you do lose some of that width, you, you do reduce some of the drag and still get a really nice, kind of more of a sporty performance feeling board. If you're a shorter paddler and want that feel there, you, you can make that decision if you want. If you want something a little wider and longer, you can, you can step up, or if you want something in between. A lot of, one of the main things that you're gonna look at is weight capacity. And Thurso does their weight capacities on their website a little bit different. It's a little bit harder to understand, I think, for consumers, but I really appreciate that they're trying to identify two different things. Number one, how you have a weight capacity in terms of paddler weight, right? Like if I'm 250 pounds, can I ride this board? Um, and then you also have weight capacity in terms of how much stuff you can put on the board. So you're gonna notice a couple different numbers. Let's see if I can remember them. Um, starting at the 10 foot board, they recommend this for 100 to 150 pound riders with a max weight of about 260 pounds. I actually think that's a little conservative. Like I have absolutely, I'm about 175, 180, and I have zero problem on this board. And even I've had beginners on this board that are, that are heavier than that. Like, I think you're fine. And so I like that they're conservative. Just know I think you can go a little beyond their numbers on the recommended paddler capacity. Weight capacity, I think about 260 is about right. 
Once you get up beyond that, it really does start to slow down the board. You can actually put more on it. We've, I've had 400 pounds on this, but it, it definitely is slow. So the 126, your rate capacities bump up to about 130 to 180 pounds is what they recommend for the riders and about 300 pounds total weight capacity there. So a little bit bigger, a little bit of step up. And I, again, I think you can put an, a person that's over 200 pounds on this. It, would they like this one better? Possibly, but you definitely can. And then when you go up to the 132, again, that weight capacity goes up to about 160 to 210 pounds, um, which I do think is probably the most conservative estimate out of the three boards. Like if, if you're a bigger paddler, you know, you're 6'4", you're 220, 230, you're going to be fine on this board. Um, obviously, the taller you get, the higher center of gravity and you're going to lose some stability there. You might have to practice a bit, but it definitely has the volume and the weight capacity to hold you. So, you know, when, again, just to kind of recap, when you're comparing the three different boards in terms of dimensions and size, it really is just a, you know, you, you start with the larger and then step down just a little bit. And we'll kind of go into more of it on the performance section, but in general, you know, if you're a larger paddler, you're going to lean towards this one. If you're a smaller paddler, or if you want something a little more sporty, you're going to lean more towards this end of the spectrum. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the performance part of our review and try to give you an idea of how the boards feel and perform on the water. Obviously, that's hard unless you're out on the water, so we'll do the best we can. If you have any recommendations for improvement, just leave them in the comments below. Um, but one of the first things we look at with these boards is stability, right? Like if you're not stable on the board, you're you're obviously not going to enjoy paddleboarding much. So we do look at stability first. Um, and that's one of the areas where the Water Walker series really does shine. They're very stable, solid boards. So when you get on the board, you know, you really want to get kind of an idea, idea of how far you can go without falling in. A lot of people, when they start to go here, they, they kind of freak out. Um, and really on the Thurso, as you can see, Now you can go quite a ways without tipping in. Very high volume board, high weight capacity, really nice stable. Even as you start to kind of move around on the board, you know, as you kind of step back, and you'll notice I kind of use the, use the paddle for an extra leg of stability there. Um, but you can see it's really nice and easy just to move around, do that step back turn, get back up to the, up to the front. And that's, you know, it, I'm on the 132 right now because that is the most stable water walker as you step down in size they do become a little bit less stable but even the 10 foot board is still a pretty stable board i would say if you are over six feet and over like 180 190 that's where you're really going to want like the, the larger board um, if you're kind of in that 150 to 180 ish range maybe the maybe the 10 foot six and then if you're under 150 just like they kind of recommend on their site that's where it's going to be optimized from a stability and other standpoint on that 10 foot board but again in general very stable nice boards from a speed standpoint again i'm on the 132 simply because it is the fastest board 11 feet long gives you more water line and yes it sounds a little counterintuitive but the longer water line the better glide you have and the better speed that you have. Um, all the boards have the, that triple fin setup, nice big center fin, good sized side fins. Sometimes boards, especially that come with fixed side fins, they're really small and they don't really do much in, other than increased drag. Um, and so I'm not a big fan of the small side fins. I do like these side fins. Um, and so when, when you're paddling on the boards, one of the things that you'll notice on the water walker is it looking at the shape it feels like it's more of a cruiser type shape but when you start paddling it just has a really nice glide and a really good feel to it and that goes from the 10 foot to the 10 6 to the 11 foot um, we're just really big fans of thurso with what they've done on their design standpoint and as far as comparing to other all arounds it's right up there with the eye rocker all around in terms of speed even though looking at it you wouldn't think so you'd think it's more of a cruiser board but that is not the case so if you want to go on longer adventure you know touring you know across the lake etc it's a good board for that um, and again if you're a larger person generally recommend the 132 as you go down you can still, you know, as we talked about that 10 foot board, 
and the 10.6, they lose an inch each time you step down. And so that reduces some of that, that friction and drag on the board. And so even the 10 foot is a little bit faster than what you would normally see out of a 10 foot board. And just all the way around, we really do like the water walkers for speed. You know, as we talk about speed, obviously tracking comes into play there because the, the longer you can stay in a straight line as you go from point A to point B, you're going to be faster. Um, from a tracking perspective, all of these boards do a really good job. I'm able to get, I would call it a higher than average stroke rate per side. Um, you know, it's not just like four to six. I can get, I can get more than that. And as your, as your paddling stroke gets better and you keep that paddle nice and vertical, you really are able to go nice and straight. As a beginner, you're going to kind of be paddling this way. And as you notice, as I do that, what happens to the board, right? So work on your stroke, but as you do, really nice straight boards. Um, that's tied into the shape. It's tied into the, the triple fin setup. And just overall, again, it's exactly, you know, we, when we talk about tracking, we'd say it's like 80 to 90% the person. Um, that 10 to 20% Thurso does really well. So now moving on to maneuverability, you're going to notice I switched boards, right? And so I switched to the 120, the 10 foot version, simply because it's the most maneuverable board, right? Um, and I, I really do like how Thurso has kind of set up their boards. Like I mentioned, it's a little bit narrower, 30 inches wide. And as you step up, you do just lose a little bit maneuverability. You gain a little bit on the stability side, a little bit on the speed, right? Um, but as you'll notice, even though this is the most maneuverable board, it's still very stable. You know, I'm 175, 180-ish, and about 5'11", and I have no problem with this board. Obviously, I'm, I'm not a beginner paddler, um, but I've had beginners on this, and they're still fine, right? But again, going back to maneuverability, it's, there is that tri-fin setup, right? So it's not, you're not just going to spin in circles like you would, you know, like, like on a single fin or a, a dual fin with like super short fins. Um, but you can definitely move around. Thurso kind of markets, when you read through this board, they talk about how this is the board they'd recommend for rivers if you have to dodge stuff back and forth. And I would totally agree with that with one caveat. If you're doing like whitewater stuff, I generally like a wider board um, because you, you need a little more stability there. But for smooth, calm rivers, um, and even like medium flow and stuff, again, where there's not whitewater, this is definitely your most maneuverable board. If you're looking out to take it surfing, as long as you have the balance, this is going to be most maneuverable. So even though we do recommend typically like smaller paddlers, smaller board, if you are someone who is a larger person that wants a more maneuverable sporty board, you know, that you can really spin around, you'll see here, you know, it's not hard to move side to side, but still tracks well. Um, you could still consider this board. If you're a smaller person, and you want to have a more natural feeling paddle board and not, and, and not necessarily feel like you're on a board that's too big, then yeah, this is definitely your board. But you could also still go to the larger board um, and be fine even as a smaller person, have that extra space for more storage, kids, et cetera. Um, but in general, the boards maneuver just like you would want an all around to do. You know, it's not too much where you're just falling in the water all the time, but it's definitely enough. And you still have the stability, which helps the maneuverability because you can, you know, like I said, so you'll see here as I spin around, like it's very easy to do that, right? And even on the shorter board, you know, as you want to do kind of like the step back turn, right? And I'm not going to go super aggressive because I got my mic on. Um, it still has a nice platform where you can just kind of turn around on a dime and get going. Um, so just in general, overall, the maneuverability is just great on these boards. So kind of bottom line, you can tell, like there's a lot that we really like about the Thurso Surf Water Walker series. It's consistently been on our top 10 kind of all around best inflatable paddle boards list, and it, that continues this year. Um, we really like the upgrades that Thurso's done. We like the attention to detail and quality. And as I mentioned, it's a quality board throughout that's gonna last a long time. In fact, I, we've been paddling a ton on the 2018 Thurso Water Walker, and it, we've, we've beat it to hell. And it still just is rock solid and fantastic board. So these boards are gonna last a long time. They're gonna be really good performers as an all around sup and let you do a lot of stuff. And it's just, it's loaded with a lot of features. In fact, one feature I forgot was this paddle holder. Um, and that's just nice if you're just sitting around and you can just set it there if you wanna do some yoga, 
um, or just sit down, crack open a drink and have a sandwich, you know, out on the lake. It's, it just gets it out of the way. And it's that kind of fine attention to detail that you notice with Thurso. The wood grain look looks nice. The colors are just, I mean, generally speaking, Thurso is one of the boards that when we take it out, everybody's always very impressed with it. And that reflects kind of how we've rated it. Um, so again, it's just a really good, high-performing board from a company who really cares about it. And they're not just, it's not just like a side thing for them. Um, and just throughout from nose to tail, fantastic paddle boards, and we highly recommend them. So we've, I've tried to cover as much as I can in terms of the differences between the board, the features, everything you get. But if there's something I forgot, please just comment below. If you have any further questions or specific questions like, hey, I'm six foot two, 185 pounds, which one do you think, right? Like, go ahead and leave those in the comments. You'll also have a link to our full in-depth review of the boards down below. And we do have those broken out into individual board reviews. Um, and as always, you know, please subscribe to our channel. We're gonna be doing a lot more content kind of in the future with sup tips and other reviews. And give us a like if you think we did a good job. So thanks and have a great day.